Hey everyone, this is Ursula and Cockrell with End Times Bible Hope. Um, thanks for joining me again. We're going to be discussing the third trumpet of Revelation. This is a super exciting video just to look at the symbolism. And before we get started, make sure to like, comment, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel so others can see these videos. These are important truths for the Christian to understand, especially in the times we're living in. So we're just going to jump right in. This is the third trumpet of Revelation, and let's just get started. The third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And we're going to look at each one of these symbols, the burning star, Wormwood, all of them. We're going to look at every single one of them. But it's important that we understand that the third trumpet is building off of the second trumpet. And we saw last time the second trumpet is building off the first trumpet. If you haven't seen those, you need to go back and watch those before we proceed. And you can find those on my YouTube channel. So the third trumpet is building off of the second trumpet. And the second trumpet was the fall of Rome during the late fourth century. So now, what has taken place? We have the fall of Rome. Now, out of Rome, something emerges, and we're going to see that clearly in the third trumpet. Now, Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, spoke about a great apostasy taking place within the Christian church. That is pertinent to what we're going to study today. And he says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. That is the apostasia. And the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition. Okay, so we have a falling away that's going to take place sometime in the Christian church. That is what's going to, where we're going to see in the third trumpet. Now, the third trumpet talked about a, a, a great shining star falling. And when we think about that, we should immediately think about Lucifer. Because in Isaiah 14, it tells us how you are fallen from heaven. O day star, son of dawn, how you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. And in the book of Revelation, in chapter Revelation chapter 12, we, and I'm not going to read it because it's quite long, but we see a picture of a great red dragon, and he's got seven heads and ten horns, and his tail sweeps a third part of the angels to the earth. Now, the Bible tells us that the dragon is the, the serpent of old, the devil. So this is the devil, his tail, in Bible prophecy, or in the Bible, the tail is spoken of as um, someone who speaks falsely, using lies. And we see that clearly in Isaiah. Uh, it says, the elder and honorable, he is the head, the prophet who teaches lies. He is the tail. And this is very consistent with what Jesus spoke about the devil in John chapter 8. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So here we have the devil using lies. He is this picture of the great star fallen from heaven. And how did he fall? He drug third of the angels, the Bible says, with him because of his lies. And that's very important what we're going to see here. Now, it talked about uh, a star, right? Lucifer being the day star. In the Bible, false teachers are also spoken of as stars. Notice what we have in Jude. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men, woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain have run greedily in the area of, in the air, air of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Notice what he says, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So here we have this picture of false teachers 
described in the Bible as stars. Wandering stars reserved for darkness. Just as uh, Jesus said, you are of your father the devil, so those who people who speak lies are also wandering stars. Now, what does it mean? It says it was burning as a lamp. This great shining star was burning as a lamp. Well, we have the, the parable of the ten virgins. They have lamps. They're using their lamps for to, to reflect God's goodness, His glory. But on the other hand, you can also have a bad lamp. It says the light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. Now, notice what it said in Revelation. This great star had fallen. There's a... a when we think about falling, Paul talks about when we fall, it's because we have fallen away from truth. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. So it is very prominent. We see this picture of, of falling or falling away in, in, in our Christian experience. We can sometimes do that. Hopefully that doesn't happen to us, but we can fall away. So this, this idea of a, a shining star, a false teacher falling uh, can happen in the Christian experience. Now it says this this great shining star falls upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Now in scripture Jesus said that he would give us his spirit and it would be a well springing up as fountain. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And he goes on to say, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. Now, here we have this bright, shining star described, we could think of as Satan, or false teachers who fall, and this false teaching now lands on the fountains of water. This spirit that Jesus wants to give us, that leads us to pure truth, gospel, it now has this star landing in it. And what does the star do? Well, the star is named Wormwood, and it says it makes it bitter. So it says it makes this fountain of water bitter. In the Bible, we can see wormwood always being tied to idolatry uh, and, and turning uh, truth into lies. We'll see that over and over in Scripture. Notice this verse. For you know that ye dwelt in the land of Egypt, and that we came through the nations which you passed by, and you saw their abominations and their idols, which were among them, wood and stone and silver and gold, so that there may not, may not be among you any May not be among you man or woman or family a tribe whose hearts turn away today from the Lord your God, our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, and that there may not be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. And so it may not happen when he hears the words of this curse that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace even though I follow the dictates of my heart, as though the drunkard could be included with the sober. Notice how we have this picture of wormwood intimately tied to idolatry and someone following the dictates of their heart, no longer living by the word of God, by every the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, as Jesus said. But now they're living according to the dictates of their heart, and they're actively engaged in idolatry. And also notice that this water, wormwood, this star falling into the water, it makes it bitter. In Acts chapter 8, we get a picture of Simon Magus, who tries to buy the Holy Spirit from the apostles. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the, of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. So here we have this imagery of a person being poisoned by bitterness. So this Holy Spirit that Christ was speaking of, this fountain of living water, the Holy Spirit, we have this fallen star, false teaching, false teachers. This star lands into this well of water Jesus wants to give us, the Spirit 
and it becomes a false spirit. As we can see, Simon Magus tried to purchase the spirit and he became bitter, right? That's what Wormwood does, this false teaching, false teachers coming in, poisoning this water, no longer representing the Holy Spirit, but a false spirit in the church, as we're going to see. In Proverbs 5, it says, For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. So what have we, we, let's put these together. We have a star, a great star falling, a false teacher falling away from truth. This name of this star is called Wormwood. Wormwood is intimately associated with idolatry. Idolatry, going after the dictates of your own heart. This star lands on the Holy Spirit God wants to give us. Polluting it, it becomes bitter. So this is no longer a the Holy Spirit. It is a false spirit brought in by false teaching, by false teachers. Now, as we saw in Simon Magus' case, he tries to purchase the Holy Spirit. And it says it became bitter. So we have false teaching coming in to the church, corrupting the Holy Spirit God wants to give us through a false spirit. The waters, many men die because of this, because now they are no longer receiving truth. They are receiving error, falsehood. The doctrine of the Christian church has become polluted. As Paul spoke about the great apostasia, and, it, and this imagery, again, brings us back to Satan, this great star fallen. And what's the intention behind that? God is very intentional about how he does these things. Now, the reason for that is because when we study Satan, it says in one of the churches, the church to Pergamum, that that is where his seat and his throne is. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, these things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you do dwell, where Satan's throne is. So here we have a picture of Satan has now infiltrated the church through Pergamos. And I'll point out that this is the third church. And we're studying the third trumpet. There is a very, uh, a very clear dis uh, parallel between these three. Two. It's not a mistake that God has the third church and the third trumpet. We'll get into that later. But also, when we read in Ezekiel 28, it says that Satan has his own sanctuaries, and he polluted them. You were the anointed cherub who covers, speaking of Satan. I established you. You were in Eden, the garden of God. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. So here we have falsehood coming into the church, influenced by Satan. Those who are teaching Satan doctrine, they are, the fa they are the children of their father, the liar. Now, did that happen? Did, pay did Christianity become, uh, you know, so to speak, corrupt? Paul said it would, and history tells us that. And this is with a, a heavy heart that no one wants, you know, that we have to talk about these things. But actually what we had there was the Catholic Church merges as the Holy Roman Empire. And paganism had come in. The adopting of numerous pagan customs, pagan teachings, had infiltrated into the church because the church was trying to, after Constantine legalized Christianity, now they were trying to bring in all sorts of heathen pagan practices to win these people. But we can never uh, bring people in that way. We have to bring people in with truth. In the Old Testament, anytime God's people encountered idols, they were always supposed to destroy them never to bring them into the church. That was that was strictly forbidden. And we, we see this throughout history. Notice this quote. The copious transfusion of heathen ceremonies into Christian worship, which had taken place before the end of the fourth century, had to a certain extent paganized, if we may so express it, the outward form and aspect of religion. Notice this other quote. Can it be possible that this is Christianity? that this is the religion of the New Testament, of Jesus Christ and his apostles. And if it is called by the name, whence did it become so corrupted? So like the religion of pagan Greece and Rome. The answer is no, this is not Christianity. It is paganism under that venerated name. And the transformation was effected by borrowing the temples, 
the idols, the ceremonies of heathenism, to silence the scruples, and to win the suffrage of those who had no taste for a religion so pure, so spiritual, and so holy as the religion of Christ. So let's recap. So we have this great star falling from heaven, drawing us back to the fall of Satan through his lies, through his corruptions. Jesus said that, you know, and the Bible says that those stars can also represent false teachers. So these are teachers who are of their father, the devil. And the, the, the idea here is this star is called Wormwood, intimately connected with idolatry, following the dictates of your heart, no longer living off of every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, as Jesus said. So now we have these teachers coming in, teaching falsehood, teaching lies. They are of their father, the devil, and they are polluting the Holy Spirit, this fountain of water God wants to give us, polluting it through a false spirit, through false teaching, through a false gospel. And many men die because of this, because they're no longer receiving truth. They are spiritually dying because of this. And history tells us, unfortunately, that the Roman Catholic Church, sad to say, you know, it's it's not something we ever really, you know, we're, we're proud of, but they began to adopt heathenism, heathen practices, everything from the adornment to the rituals to, you know, what they were teaching at that time. Um, you know, there are many, many false doctrines, and I'm not going to get into them here, but we can see that paganism began to come into the church. And it's unfortunate that it is that way. And we're going to see in the fourth trumpet that this apostasia swells so much that it even begins to block out the sun and the moon and the stars. And we're going to get into that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, friends. Uh, that's the third trumpet. Make sure you come back for the fourth trumpet. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, turn on your bell notifications. Also subscribe and share this video so more people can hear these important truths. I look forward to sharing, a next, uh, sharing another video with you next time. And stay blessed, friends.